Hi everybody, it's your girl Bunny, Ready or Not, starring Samara Weaving and Adam Brody. I'll give my review and also with an option of spoilers at the end. So if you want a review and spoilers, I will give a warning releasing that information. That's all coming up next. So we have a very wealthy family, Les Dumas, who are well known for their board games, innovating, distributing, and even creating. So they are well known and they have a family tradition that if you marry into their family, you have to take on the tradition after the wedding ceremony to play a game. Little does the outsider know that playing a game is easier said than done. Main focus are circled around two main characters Alex and Grace. And Grace is the new bride-to-be. The pros about this movie is that it keeps you interested. You are very curious in knowing, will this bride be okay? What is the game? Why is this so serious? Are they really killing people? So it really pulls you in with bringing suspense, bringing in a thriller-esque feel throughout the movie. The cons of this movie is that it's pretty short. At 95 minutes, I really feel that they could have left out some cheesy dialogue, a little bit of the jokes to add more thriller and add more suspense. I really feel that the movie was rushed and they could have taken their time just a little bit more to develop the story and add a little bit more action, add a little bit more gore and a little bit more thrill. It was just something missing throughout this film and I think that was it. Overall, I give this movie a C plus. It is worth watching if you just want to see a nice film that doesn't take itself too seriously. Although I would say that of course the con was that it felt a little rushed. Now is this part of the video where I will talk about the spoilers. So you have five seconds to cut off the video so you don't hear any spoilers if it's not what you want. Five, four, three, two, one, here come the spoilers. So throughout the film, you have Grace. She is the bride completely unaware of, about what she's about to get herself into. After the wedding ceremony, the family invites her back to the house where they spend time and they talk until it is 12 midnight. In their tradition, in their family at 12 midnight, the newcomer, the outsider, has to play a game. This game is the determining factor for their future within their family. So other people in the family that are married, you think, how are they married? Did they have to go through the same experience? Did they have to go through something to where their lives were in danger? One of the characters jokes and says, oh, on my wedding night, I had to play chess. Or on my wedding night, I had to play uh, checkers. And it was so boring and we just played that. So you don't have to worry about anything. Well, there's something very suspicious and particular about hide and seek. There is a particular box that was made by their great grandfather to where, of course, they're creator of games that once you put in a blank card, it does something on the inside of the box that decides what game you're going to play. So the bride-to-be has to put a blank card inside of this card. It formulates what game you're going to play. It pops out, you flip it over, and that's the game that you have to play. When she puts in the card, she unfortunately gets hide and seek. And from that moment, the family's looking at each other like, oh, she got the hide and seek. The catch about hide and seek is that you're hiding, but their mission and their goal is to kill you. They cannot let you live. If you live, it's in their tradition to where they believe that if you live, they all will die. That there's a rumor that within their family, a family that did not get that person 
they would all die. There was rumors that they would burn. There was rumors that they exploded or disappeared. So they have to catch this person and kill them or they will die in their place. So you're left with that in your brain about, well, why would they have to kill them? And why would they die? So the, stories co the story continues and Grace, she pulls out this card. She's really not taking it too seriously. She really doesn't know what's going on. They play a hide and seek record that gives her 100 seconds to hide and find somewhere else to go. So the guy is telling her, look, this is for real. I need you to hide. It's very serious. This is not a game. She's thinking, okay. He's like, no, seriously, you need to find somewhere to hide and do not appear again until the sun comes up, until it's dawn. So she's still not taking it seriously. And she's just like, yeah, whatever. So she proceeds to go and find a hiding place. When she goes to find a hiding place, she's in there, she's waiting. And while she's waiting, we see the family locking and loading, picking up weapons, ready to kill Grace. Grace is in this hiding place. The family is still going throughout the house looking for her and she gets tired and she's frustrated. She's like, this is so stupid. I'm just gonna let them find me. I'm just gonna get out. As she gets out, someone sees her and they do a gunshot and she's like, oh my goodness, they're really trying to kill me. When she goes to try to find a hiding space, her her uh, husband-to-be, Alex, he finds her. And he's like, you you really, you really, really gotta hide. This is for real. And she's just like, did they just try to kill me? Even the, the sister of the character, she accidentally shoots one of the maids because she thinks that it's Grace, but it's really not. So we know that she finally understands this is real, they're trying to kill me. Throughout the movie, they try over and over again to kill her. We are in some very thriller, suspenseful scenes where she's almost caught. She gets up enough muster to maybe find some weapons to defend herself. It finally gets closer towards the end where she knows this is not a game. She's finally captured by one of the assistants to the house. He looks like he's the butler or some security and he finds her and he brings her back in. She then discovers that they are trying to get her because the, this family is, they're devil worshipers. They have got to get her in order to make a sacrifice to Satan before the sun rises. So she manages to escape because one of the brothers, Alex's brother, he's fed up with it. He thinks that it's a crazy tra tradition and he just can't muster enough to, to for them to kill her and he just thinks it's so stupid and maybe it's just false and this is just so dumb so he ends up helping grace escape and she goes throughout the house and her husband alex finds her and says we'll get out of here it's okay i can't believe they tried to kill you let's get out of here she's just like okay we got to get out of here I'm just, this whole thing is crazy. And as he's holding her, he says out loud, she's in here, everybody, she's in here. And she's just like, oh my God. So clearly he was in on it and he's like, hey, this is the family tradition. I'm sorry, boo, but we got to kill you. They get to the final scene where they have her strapped down to the table to give her uh, as a sacrifice. And Alex is over her with the dagger about to stab her and they're like hurry up the sun is about to come up we need to hurry up and kill her he has the dagger over her head getting ready to kill her and he can't muster up enough to kill her and instead of killing her he stabs her in the shoulder so as he stabs her in the shoulder the sun is has come up and they're like what do you do we have to sacrifice her something's gonna happen to us we're gonna die the sun comes up they open up the curtains and the family is just like, nothing's happening. And one of the family members said, I knew this was fake. I know it was stupid. It's just some crazy, you know, just hoax. And it's just something that they did in the family to scare us, to play a game. And nothing's happening to us. We're fine. And his body explodes. <laughs> and blood goes all over the place. 
And then they're talking to each other and it says, is this real? I can't believe it. Then boom, then another family member explodes. They all start to explode one after another. And we realize that, wow, they really did have <laughs> that connection with Satan to give them their wealth and who they were. And we, we can assume that the grandfather or the great-great-grandfather years ago made a deal with the devil that if he was rich, if he had wealth, if he had all of these things, that he would give Satan a sacrifice if they played this specific game. So they're all exploding and they're all dying because they didn't fulfill their deal of the hide and seek and giving the sacrifice. We only have Alex and Grace left. They're standing there and she says, I can't believe you were going to kill me. And he was just like, look, nothing's happening to me. So, so, so clearly, you know, I have a past because I tried to help you and I stabbed you in the shoulder and I didn't kill you. So let's just work this out. And Grace is looking at him like, don't even think about it. And she's just looking at him like, if you even thought we were going to be together after this, we're not. And as he's talking, he implodes and more blood goes all over the place. And then she sees the spirit or the ghost of the great, great grandfather. It kind of gives her the head tilt like, you escaped. They didn't get you. That's not your fault. So you're free. So Grace ends up escaping this horrific night and the closing scene. She's on the steps of the mansion, smoking a cigarette, just drenched in blood, completely red. And you hear the fire trucks and you hear the sirens and somebody's on the way to get her. And then that's the end of the movie. C plus going more towards B. It wasn't a bad movie. I just wish it was longer. It felt super rushed. Let me know what you think. Subscribe, hit that notification bell. And follow me on Instagram, same profile name, officialbun underscore E. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.